It's the Mightiest Nightliest Show, recorded live from a bedroom in Santa Clarita, California, with your host, Joanne Jeanette. Music and sound effects provided by the Garage Band Affair. Tonight's guest, sci-fi guy, Bill McCormick. Also joining us, author and comic creator, Bill McCormick. Tonight's highlights, Bill and Joanne talk about stuff. Who wore it better? Who unscramble these words? And whose boobs are these? Now give it up for the woman who says, hey, my show isn't good, but it's better than Tom Snyder. Your host, Joanne Jeanette. Good. Sorry it took me a while. I had no, to pick right. up the mic. It's been in my engine. How cold is it in Chicago right now? Uh, like 30, 35. It's the same here in California. I, I take that back. It, it's literally 33, it says. My computer gives me the update. Oh, my gosh. No, it's really cold here. I, I'm thinking about moving uh, either back to Chicago, Dayton, Ohio, or North Carolina. Because California, yeah. L.A., the there's nothing here <laughs> okay so it's bill mccormick everybody hey everybody it's uh bill and um so you're the sci-fi guy but you're so much yeah. more than that you're so much more than that um first you were recently in the hospital yeah what happened are you okay i mean you don't have to talk about it but are you okay oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm fine um uh, i was in in um in june for a severe dehydration because i had diarrhea for three months oh my and gosh I, three <laughs> months like every day yeah, yeah every day and then, uh, then I still had it for a while, and then, then they wanted to put me in to do a colonoscopy, but because of COVID, they couldn't get an open bed until December. So oh they just put, they just put me on these meds to try and plug me up a little bit, and um, <laughs> finally got went into the hospital, and they just oh, you know I I love it when I came out when I was waking up in the hospital bed, you know, and they they bring in the report with you, and it's like, and, and my doctor is a teaching doctor, so he has students with him. Right. And, um, and they're like, okay, so we got found a good amount of cancerous polyps in you. And I'm like, there's no such thing as a good amount. Right. He's like, right. Seven. A large amount is what he means, right? Yeah, yeah found seven of them. And, uh, but they, they all came out and I looked like a old clam. So, how did they uh, get those out? Uh, they, they flush them, them or they, no, they, no, they, they go, they go up your butt with the scissors and cut them out. <laughs> Fantastic. So now that we've had a discussion about things being up your butt, you are a critically acclaimed award-winning author. Yep. Now in the late eighties, you were write, a writer for Rocker Magazine. Remind me of Rocker Magazine. Was this out of sure. New York, Chicago? What was this? It was literally called Chicago Rocker Magazine. Chicago uh, Rocker. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I wrote. Was it like them. the Reader, or what? Would, like what was it? No, like? it, was, it was it was a suburban metal scene magazine. It was dedicated oh cool. To, um, is we you know there was this guy named tony labarbera who's a promoter and it was kind of a highlight they're always band. named tony but go yeah. on yeah. yeah yeah he uh he, he was highlighted he wanted to highlight the bands he worked with of course and then um we highlighted a bunch of other stuff and i i brought in kind of a more of a city feel for things and um i was still i was doing a radio show at the, the beat of chicago at wytc fm that's abc in chicago yeah and i was with them for um, six seven years and so I would do I would do stuff for the rocker and then I would do stuff on the radio show that tied into the rocker and went back and forth like that and um, it was fun you know that is very time. cool so what bands did you get to interview this is the eighties so I mean yeah. my gosh um, who was, like who was a local Chicago band back then oh uh, well yeah Paradox is a really popular band um, uh, uh, 13, 13, 13, which is now the most oh they're era. still around yeah there's yeah. Uh, is it the same members though or do yeah. they like swap them out like Menudo. Uh, there's some, some some of them swapped out. Some of them, like Paradox, uh, the, the one brother died of a drug overdose. Mm. So you know they're not doing. He, he's he's playing as John Dobbs now. He's not doing Paradox at all anymore. Okay. Um, Did you see my T-shirt? Look at this thing I found. The, the young, young ones. One. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. I found I that at a thrift store. I was like, oh, I have to buy this. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, that is. You also worked at Z95. Yeah. I didn't know that. How didn't yeah. I know that? I don't, I don't know, know why I didn't know that. 
Okay, so you pub you publish comics and you've been doing this independently for at least a decade now, right? Not quite. Um, I started, no? I got my start in 2016 um, and I don't publish them. Um, I write them. Uh, there's a company called Haditi Zimbaba that does the publishing part of it. Okay. Um, and um, actually the, that, that when I started working for them or working with them, to be more accurate to say, uh, when I started working with them, that my life really changed because I was living up on the north side of Chicago. Life wasn't going all that well for me. Things weren't going that hot. Hmm. And um, sorry, they had a they had an apartment I could get down here to, while they were trying to straighten out some money that they owed me. So they like, "You want an apartment? We'll give you an apartment." And I'm like, "Okay, Jeez. that you know that takes that's one less thing for me to worry about paying you know for." So I came down to the south side of Chicago, and I mean south. We we're um, like Canaryville uh, South or like South meaning like Oak Lawn? No, no, no. We're, I'm still in Chicago. It's 8,800 South and 3,000 East. So mm -hmm. I'm like a mile from Hammond, Indiana. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, so you've got the casino right there too. And yeah, cheap gas. Yeah. You just go, yeah. You can go across the border for the cheap gas. Yeah. Um, but the, um, but I've been down here ever since. And I just, I really fell in love with the neighborhood once I got in. You know, I like the library down here and I'm a library guy. So, you know, I like going to the library. Do research right. there. And having a published author in a library makes them feel cool. And um, we set up a mentorship program for teens. Uh, usually I got the troubled ones, the ones who were having, you know, like get, getting whatever, they had issues. Yeah. And, uh, and I worked with some trans kids and uh, really, I really liked it. And I was looking forward to doing more of that in 2020 when the pandemic hit. And right. First, we're going to spin the wheel of trash. This is something I make everybody do. Big money. I need some excitement out of you. Come on. <laughs> big money. Big money. Woo! <laughs> Offer unconditional positive regard to someone. I don't know what that means. And then here's what I got to do today. Lift off and the clock has started. Ah, spin again. Hold on. Oh, Just give me something good. Moisturize a frozen fish. So that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, so this is your web page. You got that up there, right? Yeah. Okay, and this is Bill MC sci-fi.com and like yep. everything's on here you've got merchandise you've got your blog you've got uh links to the novels the shorts the comics that you've done legends parallel here we go here's the website yay so how many of these have you had pub published now okay there's there's three issues out now and there's a trade paperback which is, some people think is a graphic novel but it's, it's just a collection it's not like an omnibus edition only for comics okay uh, um and uh it's uh we just tell everyone it's a story for people who think that quantum physics isn't violent or sexy enough we fix that <laughs> um it's gotten some great reviews i mean critically it's gotten reviewed in london it's uh it's been licensed in germany I, i'm always confused by that one because there are like not that many black people in germany and this is very much a black oriented comic okay and uh, you know it's just it highlights it's the the guy on the right in this in the suit uh, he's Tom Hill, a.k.a. Siafu. He's a, a billionaire. He's a brilliant man. You know, there's a lot of positive imagery in there, you know. Good. And, yeah. uh, so, but uh, it's popular in Germany. I mean, they, 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 we sell face masks and stuff with Legends Parallel images on it. Very and cool. the one with the Sikh, Sikh character, uh, Aramar Singh, that sells all the time in, in Germany. I'm like, I, I don't get that at all, but, you know. <laughs> Where, what, because there's nothing like that out there, I'm thinking. No, prob probably not, probably right? not. Right, and it is yeah. M for mature, so, you yeah. know, um, and, and that's mostly because there's boobies? Uh, there's boobies, there's dongles, uh, no, oh. we're, we're equal opportunity exploiters. That's awesome, uh, okay. Um, we just, yeah. we, we wanted to create, people get it, I, I, we wanted to say something like, you can go on TV and blow away a box of kittens with a 45 and everybody's like, ooh. I know That's edgy, but if you wear a low cut shirt, you're a woman in a low cut drop or something like that, oh, I'll get that off the TV. It'll ruin my children. Right. Uh, and so, all it is is body parts. That's sort of yeah. like why I'm playing whose boobs are these. This is a game that I play because it, they're just flabs of skin and yeah. we all have boobs. Yep. Mine are covered in fur, but it, yeah. <laughs> Everyone has them. So we, we do, we are like 
when it comes to women, first of all, we either objectify them to such dangerous levels that we take away the idea that they're human, right, through media. Mm -hmm. But then when we show that, it becomes so offensive, like we're this puritanical society. Now, you're way more comfortable. Like, I'm Catholic, so I was raised very, like, sexually repressed. I, I, like, I'm just not like, Woo! like, I'm not, I would never be, I've gone to spring break and I've been around people going, Woo! but that's just not my, my thing. Like, I'm not like that, you know, but again, you're right, Catholic. right. Uh, but violence is accepted as normal, mm -hmm. but then a pair of breasts are not or right. legs, or you better cover up your knee or, you know, and so growing up, you know, a woman in Catholicism, especially in the seventies and eighties, I was shamed for just existing. Yeah. You know, they shame you for everything. Your knee is showing, your thigh is showing, your, you know, you bent over the wrong way. Like you're constantly being policed by everyone around you as to protect the boy's eyes. Yeah. No, I, look, I went to a Catholic school. I was raised. No. So right. yeah, I yeah. remember nuns walking around getting people with rulers. You're not, you don't do that. No, I don't want that. And the other thing too, because we had to wear the uniforms and they mm -hmm. were, they were flat front um, chino pants which right. became very difficult for young boys who were teens that yeah. were having moments, you know, that were sort of beyond their control because they're flat fronts. So it's very obvious, right? So a lot of the guys would untuck their shirts, but then they'd be in trouble for untucking their shirts. Right. So I don't know. I think that's my, but you're very comfortable with this stuff. I'm not always so much. This is uh, Rosario Dawson. Yeah, She's that's a her. big fan of yours, right? Yes, she is. And does she get them like every... She's got all three issues now. Um, she's also got the, the hybrid zero comics. That's fantastic. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, her niece or her cousin, excuse me, lives here in Chicago. And that's how oh, she does. Kind of, yeah. We kind of all got introduced informally and that, that was kind of cool. That's very cool. Here's you at another one of these events. I love that you go out and do it. <laughs> Mariah Carey. This is where we play whose boobs are these. Okay. Whose boobs are these? Is it the Facts of Life cast, 80s band Vixen, Sex in the City cast, or Vanity Six Music Group? Uh, I'm going to go 80 band Vixen. Bing, 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 bing. You got it. Can you recognize this boob? Uh, Freddie Mercury? No, just a streaker at some game. <laughs> but this is funny. What I found funny about this photo is not only is he streaking, but he's like, multitasking right so yeah. he's streaking but he's also like you know finishing up his phone calls for the week like yeah i gotta make sure that i you know call my accountant while he's being arrested whose boobs are that. these yeah I, I love the fact that he's wearing socks like i'm not going to get athlete's foot when i'm doing this you know <laughs> i didn't even notice the socks good eye whose boobs are these i have no idea you will totally remember this guy slim good body oh yeah there he is with captain kangaroo he was a television favorite in like the mid seventies. Yeah, Captain Kangaroo, when he hit his peak in the seventies, I was already up on becoming a teen. Oh, so okay. I was so born in. You, I was born a while before that. Do you know who Shelley Howard is? Yeah. Okay, you do. And so these are some of his original art. And I have a book because he was friends with the guy that I worked, Robert Murphy. And mm -hmm. so they like lived near each other and they would go for drinks like, I don't know, every Wednesday or something. So I met Shelly a couple of times and he gave me a book of all of his classic art. And it's just funny because this is the art that Shelly used to do by hand or with a computer. It would take him hours. Mm -hmm. how, how much time do you think it would take you and I to do something of this caliber at 15 seconds? Yeah, maybe 30. But isn't that funny how how art and graphics, but this was graphic arts back then. So I thought I would feature these because I thought you'd appreciate them. And I'm glad that you know who Shelly is. Okay, who wore the color, who wore it better? Who wore green corduroy better? Julius oh, Ju Cheeser, Julius, Julius, Julius Cheeser or Julius. Gabe Kaplan? Okay. No, Julius, like, all the way, Julius all the way down. The coffee who, cup sells it. Who wore it better, Bark Ruffalo or Gwyneth Paltrow? Ooh, tough one. I'm going to go with Bark Ruffalo. Okay. Who wore it better, Woof Gretzky or Bobby Orr? Oh, Bobby Orr. Legend. You think so? Yeah? yeah. Okay. Which insult would make you cry more, being called a meanie weenie tortellini or being told that you're so annoying you make Happy Meals cry? Both have been <laughs> said to me. So, ah, um, yeah, I, I thought I'd share them. I guess the Happy Meal one. The Happy Meal. Yeah, that would bother me too. Uh, be honest with you, I get uh, just last uh, last week I got a death threat from a guy because I wouldn't give him a good, good review. So it's kind of yeah, it's kind of oil off of you know. Is oil that online? 
because uh, everybody no, he, gets abused online now. No, he, he actually found my phone number and called me. So that, oh that was, my gosh, because you were doing one of your blogs and you didn't. No, he. I, I was going. To try, I was trying to do an interview with him, and then the more he kept telling me, the more the story kept falling apart. Like none of this, I could confirm none of it. So finally, I just I'm walking away from this. It's a mess, and yeah. he he got very mad. He called me all sorts of names, and he's going to be a millionaire, and he's going to ruin me in the business, and oh. you know, and I'm like. I don't, I don't, I don't um, look to ruin anyone when I become a millionaire. I just want to be a millionaire eventually because everyone yeah. on, told, on TV told me, do this, this, and this, and you'll get here. And none of that, none of their formulas worked. So I, always, I, bitter. I always like uh, David Brin's philosophy. He, he, he told me one time a few years ago, he said, success is not high. There's plenty for everyone. Go ahead and share. Okay, so we did meeny weeny teeny. Okay. So who wore it better? Jeff Garland whining about how he's paid well to sit in a chair. You know that, right? He, mm -hmm. he left. I couldn't believe that. I was like, you sit in a chair, dude. Really? It just, they're asking you just stop saying the word vagina for three years. They're asking you just stop saying it. And he couldn't do that. I don't know. He gets paid so well to sit in a chair. Okay. Um, you, then you've got Kevin Pugsworth with legs too short to reach the Ottoman or Sinead O'Collar forgetting to charge up the iPad again. Who wore it better out of the three? Kevin, Kevin Pugsworth. I agree. He's so cute, isn't he? He's so cute. I just want to like, he makes me squishy in my thumb. Okay, fun facts about urine. In 1997, Motley Crue, did you know this? Released a soda yeah. called Motley Brew. You knew about this. Did you own any of it? Did you buy no, it and try no, it? No, 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 no. Uh, a friend of mine in LA actually worked on the project when it was first coming up. And did uh, it turn urine blue or not? Yeah, yeah, oh, that, was, that actually seemed to be the whole point of it. <laughs> right. So it was just lots of, uh, how do you do that? You just put in lots of colored. Lots of blue food dye. Yeah, that's it. And then NASA created a machine that makes astronauts urine into drinking water while they're up there. And it's as pure as U.S. tap water. Yeah, they've had that for a while. Oh, you know about that? Yeah. I, I, okay, who wore it better? Uh, Rock the cat ba or Cindy Brady. I'm going with Cindy Brady this time. Yeah, it's a toss up for me. I'll go with Cindy. Okay. Who are these guys? Because I didn't know. Oh my God, who are they? I didn't know. I was like, I, I have no, I, I know all these 80s bands. I could not place these guys. Yeah. Unscramble this word. Quip. Bing, bing. Unscramble this word. Uh, chores. You got it. Unscramble this word. Snaps. You got it. Unscramble this word. Uh, sorrow. You got it. And then we're back to the beginning. So that was fun. So that was good. Um, mm -hmm. So tell me about what's, what are you featuring on News World um, Center this week? World News Center? Or World um, Center. Sorry, I got it wrong. I haven't decided yet. Uh, I usually go through, I, I've been kind of going back and forth. I've been doing some heavy science stuff. Uh, yeah, what have you been what have been some of the topics lately because I, I i always enjoyed hearing what you were investigating yeah um we we did a thing on i did a big thing on covid like 10 different articles on that okay. trying to get people to wear a mask and get a shot um and that went over like a lead balloon with some people uh did a did a reprint uh, recently of uh the christmas story oh. um and i did uh the, the one we were talking about before gospel according to luke and all that um uh, did something else. I, I forget what it was. I, there's over 2000 articles up there. So they kind of blur after a while. Do you have a doing, favorite? Um, no, not really. I mean, it kind of depends on my mood. Um, I, uh, I, I think if, I think if I was going to pick a favorite, it'd be the one I'm, uh, I wrote about Sergius and Bacchus, the gay saints, because there's a lot, it isn't, it isn't just like me saying, Hey, there's a picture of these two guys together. I, I found, well, I don't know, 30 or 40 actual Catholic doctrines from the 12th century, 13th century, 14th century that were online, you know, copies of them are online. Yeah. And so I, I got them all in the original Latin. I got them in translations. I got them all over the place. I put a lot of work into that one and I, I'm just really grateful for it. So, I'm, and so I'm, right. It's not that I'm like anti religion, mm, but okay. Let's say the Bible was like sort of a guidebook or a history book of its time. All you have to do is get it in somebody else's hands and they can rewrite it to spin it any way they please. Like we, 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 we rewrite history every day. Yeah. What is a word that you have trouble spelling every time? Uh, 
Who, um, Mine's corduroy. I have to look it up every time. I don't know where you place the U. Yeah, uh, corduroy would, would get me. Uh, right. uh, I had one the other day I was trying to spell, and I just I finally surrendered and went online to look for it. Um, I'm actually a pretty good speller normally. Yeah. But, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, camaraderie. I was just, it, for, it's like, is there, is there an O in there? Is there an A? Is there, <laughs> is there a Q? Are you me the, okay, let's spell it together. Camaraderie. Yeah. So, C O M. No, is it two M's? Comma. No. No. One. Been, it's com, com, oh, never mind. C O M. Now, now, you, now you've got me, my brain is spinning again. So. D, well, I don't know either. See, that would be one too. But for me, it was corduroy because I was trying to type corduroy today. And I was like, ooh, are there any words that you can't pronounce? Because doing radio for so many years, one of the words that I got called out on really early on, I, I, and you don't even know that you do it until someone points it out, is I used to say pitcher instead of picture. So they had to, every time it was, I replaced it with photo or pic. That's how I got, you know, when I was doing news and stuff, I was like photo, not picture. Mm -hmm. So I would always use that word, word instead, but eventually I would have to spell it P I C I would spell it, you know, phonetically P I C K T C H E R picture. There you go. Sure. Cause otherwise I'd say picture. Yeah. I used to, uh, my, my bad one, and it took me for years to get over it. I used to pronounce faux fall F-A-U-X, the French word for almost and similar. Like yeah. it's a faux, it's a faux fur. Oh, faux, right. Fake, yes, fake yes, 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 yes. And, and I kept calling it foul, foul fur, because it's spelled F-A-U-X. It looks like it should be foul. Or fox. Um, yeah. You <laughs> say fox. Uh, yeah. So, uh, NASA. So. NASA. Uh, still, I still get NASA, N-A-S-A. I would say NASA, like in the Bahamas. Oh, ah, yeah. NASA. Somebody goes, it's NASA. I go, this is what I'm saying. They're like, no, you're saying NASA. It's like, I don't hear it. It's fine. Uh, so if you say it quick enough, nobody's paying attention anyway. Uh, let's see. What else do we need to know? So what else do we need to promote? Um, I'll put your uh, website up there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Obviously you go to Uh if, if you're not looking for a comic, uh, my novel Splice, Hit Pick Technology. Was yes. Voted tell 20. me about Splice. This is a yeah. book. Yeah. It uh, was voted 20, uh, the tw best science fiction novel of 2020 by the Critters Readers Poll. Fantastic. And that, that literally the poll was started by the same people who did uh, a couple of famous awards, the Nebula Awards, you know, the, the big time authors. Go. And this is more, that's more of a critique award, you know, the you, different people get into. The Critters poll, they started for fans. So you, if you're a fan of the book and you've read the book, you have to have read the book. You can't just go up there and vote. Right. So, so you sell a lot of books that way because people have to buy it to read it. And um, that was cool. Uh, but I got nominated and then um, one thing led to another. And next thing I knew, I won. And won pretty handily, too. So, uh, yeah. So the Splice hit the technology. Um, it was uh, based on a character created by Watchdog Entertainment. And, um, excuse me. And um, I, I was, it's kind of a funny story. I was originally hired. I originally pitched them a comic book based on that character because I wanted to straighten out what they had for some comics. Yeah. And he said, no, he goes, write me a movie. He goes, I can get it funded. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah. so I wrote the movie. Uh, okay. And, it, and the band, yeah, and it, I wrote the whole screenplay. And it, we were looking at different things, and maybe try and come up with a way to promote it. And the pandemic was hitting. Oh, yeah. So we had a couple of things going on. I started in 2019. I backed off it because we weren't really going to do anything. All of a sudden, he's like, you know, the country's going to hell in a handbasket. Go ahead and write the novel. Right. So, yeah. So I wrote the novel. I never did get to write the comic book I wanted to write. I mean, the whole thing started with me writing one comic, wanting to write a comic book. But I wrote the novel, and um, then uh, people. It's about this guy. A real quick synopsis: It's about a young black kid who gets abandoned in Omaha. You know, he becomes really good with computers, uh, like really, really good with computers, um, and he uses them to hack ATMs. And he, he's not living the high moral lifestyle because, let's face it, he's an abandoned kid in Utah. They're in uh, Oklahoma, yeah. you know, so I've driven uh, through Utah. It's the longest 10 hours of your life. It's, uh, it's uh, if they would just take Utah out, it would yeah. be a great drive across the U.S. But it's that whole Utah and Idaho. I wasn't. I, did I drive through that? I don't even remember. But yeah, I, I, I've got family in Idaho, so I leave them alone. But, oh, okay. uh, <laughs> yeah, but they have yeah, potatoes. But what is Utah known for? Hiding yeah. aliens? Yeah, it's a what's idea. in there? Like what's there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, this kid, he gets good with computers, and then the book follows him as he gets older. 
and he ends up uh, becoming a part of the New York mob. Oh, from he, Utah. Yeah, from Oklahoma. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, uh, o- Omaha, Nebraska. Sorry, I'm, 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 I wrote the book and I forgot where it's from. <laughs> um, so anyway, so he goes from Omaha. He ends up in Chicago. Uh, he ends up uh, riding around with a bunch of Jesus freaks in a bus while he's wor- working on more cons. Um, he ends up in the mafia. I don't want to give it a book away. Yeah, don't uh, give it totally away. But uh, long story short, he ends up. He decides to, he wants to. He wants to hack government computers, but to do that, he needs to get closer to them. So he and the mob work out a deal where he joins the Marines. And then the book just like the first half of the book gets you to there. And that part of the book takes off like a bat out of hell. Okay. And uh, this guy, Josh Grenard, who is a uh, former captain in the United States Army, read it and immediately just gave this five star review. He's like, this is what the military smells like. This is what it sounds like. This is it. This is like what I heard every day of my life for 20 years or something. And, you know, and so that's it. People really get it and they like it. Uh, it's it's difficult read. Uh, it's uh, got a lot of end bombs in it because people don't respect little black kids. And, you know, I wanted to get that across. Um, it's got a lot of violence in it, real harsh violence. I okay. get pretty graphic in it. Um, but it fits the book. It, it, the book wouldn't work without the violence. The book wouldn't work without the things that are in it. Okay. And, um, and then, like I said, it won a reader's poll. So somebody liked it. People liked it. Um, it's still doing pretty well for us. Um, we're looking at the beginning of the year. We're uh, in, talking to auction, uh, maybe part, partner up with another company or something like that. I don't know what they're going to do, but uh, see about uh, promoting it, you know, because shooting a film during the pandemic as an independent is yeah. almost impossible because yeah. the insurance the insurance that they have out there is insane. Yeah. But we're, they're working on new options. It's watchdogs. Baby. Dayton, Ohio is the new uh, Hollywood. They're working on it right now. And they just bought 250,000 square foot warehouse. And they, mm-hmm. and because out here, just, I don't know what it is about California, Hollywood, but it attracts like weirdos. So if you do it in Dayton, Ohio, you're getting weirdos, but you're getting like, um, with family value type weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? So you're not running into the same sort of, and you've got a uh, weed that's really, uh, it's, you know, it's totally legal here. Everyone seems to be high all the time. I don't know how they're holding down jobs, but a lot of them are just getting paid to do nothing. So, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, Dayton, Ohio is another place too. It's called, um, what is it? Studio 1913. And they're really trying to push it out there. And oh, cool. the cost of living in Dayton, Ohio, I'm actually thinking about moving out there. The cost of living is so much better, better yeah. than Chicago, better than here. And everything is new. You know, they're building, they're building communities. A bunch of companies are going out there. They're dumping money into the communities. You know, they're not trying to, it's just different from, I would say, Illinois and, and California. Uh, North Carolina is another place too. That's. Yeah. I've booming. got a friend who lives in North Carolina. Yeah. North lives and South in- Carolina, all the big companies are going down there because mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense. You're not making a profit if you're in California. You're not making a profit if you're in Chicago. So that's what a lot of people are doing. And I'm, I'm thinking about, because everything that the family came here to California and LA. Mm-hmm. I was born here, by the way, in Hollywood. I was born in the uh, universal, or not born, uh, conceived. My parents' honeymoon, 1971, February. I was conceived at 333 Universal Drive, room 708 of the Sheridan Universal. <laughs> Isn't it gross <laughs> that I know that? Do they have a plaque? <laughs> they don't, but I keep meaning to go over there to visit the room where I was conceived. I have a photograph of my mom and dad, and she's like, it's it's actually, everyone's like, ew, gross. I'm like, come on, my parents are married. It's her honeymoon. She's in her 90. It wasn't, right. you know, and it's beautiful. She's like, hi, like, oh, like she's waiting in bed. Like, I love you. It's actually quite sweet, you mm-hmm. know? So I don't know. Uh, okay, so the book, yes, and then a movie, great. And then um, I could say I knew I knew you when, which happens to like I, I it's always I knew you when. We, we, we finally went and saw Spider Man Far From Home because it was in a theater with uh, social distancing restrictions built into the seating. Oh, okay. Yep. So, so it's still pretty bad out there in Chicago. Yeah. As far as yeah. like restrict, yeah. I, I mean, I'm working from home anyway, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I was working in a hotel for a while. And I, I gotta be honest, the thing I did like about working at the hotel was interacting with people again. Because <laughs> I, I just am an extrovert. I have to be around people. That's why I'm always at the amusement park too. I'll go there yeah. just for lunch or anything. Because I have to be around people. I can't just, ugh. but I was an only kid. So I spent most of my life, my like first, my formative years, like up till 13, 
most of my, it was me home alone, plopped in front of a television, you know? So that might be another reason why I just, at the age of 50, I'm like, I don't want to watch or listen or see, like, I don't, like you people don't know I exist. I'm done watching you. I'm done, you know, making you all wealthy. And I just like, I don't, I don't care about your awards. I I wasn't, if I was part of making that show, I'd care about your award. But if you're not part of it, it just doesn't make sense, you know? So how was Spider-Man though? Was it good? It was was excellent. It was Was excellent. But yeah, but the the catch here is, I'll tell you right now, if you have not seen the previous seven movies, really, you won't get it. All the way back. You got to go all the way back to Tobey Maguire and start all over again. You get Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield. And then Tom Holland. You can't you just walk shoot. in and it's he's he's Spider Man. No, no, they they. He's, I don't want to give it away. They okay. they they've done a really good job of keeping spoilers out of the media, and I don't want to be the guy who does it. But it uh, that I saw the that, one with the cartoon. What was that? The multiverse one. That one yeah. I really liked. Yeah, that yeah. One was that one that one, was, that one stood alone. That's Miles Morales. He's a great character. I loved that. Um, yeah, but they were introducing you to the multiverse in that one, so it was, it was really cool. Um, Spider-Man Far From Home or No Way Home kind of plays off the Miles Morales movie. Um, it it is crazy. It, it's it's a nonstop. It 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 goes from like hyper reaction, you know, it's like do, 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 big fight, everything going on, to bang stop, and then everyone starts talking, and you start learning more about these characters, and all of a sudden bang 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 bang. And the way they paste it is really good. You just, you're not going to want to get out of your seat. You got to pee. Just wear a diaper. Um, <laughs> So that's Bill McCormick's. Uh, that's your review of yeah. Spider Man. Just wear yeah. a diaper if you. Yeah, wear a diaper. It. Don't leave this. Don't leave the seat. Now, my review for my little Zoom show that I'm doing here, which I'll post in a few days after I edit it, is that my show is better than Tom Snyder. That's not saying much, but what that's is that's as good as it gets. This cool. show is better than Tom Snyder. Now, no one under the age of fifty three would know who Tom Snyder is. We did a con uh, in 2019, in fact, the last one we did, and table arrangements got changed. So I ended up between the artists who do Spawn and the oh, television Spawn, show. I know that one. And the television show Land of the Lost from the 70s, all the original actors were there. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, people for that Land of the Lost thing, man, they had, they had people dressed up as the aliens from the underground world. They had the, the booth you could go into to go travel through time and space. I mean, it was like a pretty elaborate setup for sitting on a con. But then I discovered they were charging $45 per selfie and they had people lined up to get them. I'm I like, know. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I get I it, I get I, it I, now. I, yeah. I, the only time I ever paid for one of those was Carrie Fisher and it was 110. And yeah. that was the only one. But these other ones, I'm, not, I'm not, like, really? It's five seconds of your time. And if I really want a photo with, I don't know who, I'd pick somebody, I could just superimpose it online. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can put yourself with anyone in a photo. Yeah. You could right. you could Photoshop anything. So if I really need a photo of myself as a Charlie's Angel or with a Charlie's Angel, I could just you know. So I don't know. Some people like doing that. I don't. It's just not my thing. Okay, I miss you, and miss um, you hope to see you soon. And I can't wait till all this happens. And then if your whole thing becomes a movie, you're gonna I get to go to the premiere, right? I'll go to yep, that. Absolutely. Premiere. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Up. Okay, you take care. Love you lots. All right, take care. I'll let Bye-bye. you know when this posts. All right, thanks.